Hello everyone and welcome to the Misfits Knits podcast. I am Billy, your host, and I am coming to you from Idaho in the U.S. Today it is pretty rainy and gloomy. It's 48 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is 9 degrees Celsius. Um, it's basically a gloomy, chilly day. I kind of dressed really like sunny and I wanted to be all summery today and then it got cold so I threw on a sweater on top of it. So anywho, uh, this is obviously my first podcast and so my plans for this podcast are I'm a really slow knitter so I kind of, I'm only planning on doing a podcast like every other week so I am such a slow knitter and I don't knit as fast as some of these other people who podcast. I can't finish things that quickly. So I've kind of figured, you know, doing a podcast every other week will give me more content for each one. And then I'm kind of wanting to do like another video in between on the off week. Some fun vloggy type videos. Um, anywho, on to the knitting content. So a little bit about me. I live in Idaho and I live with my partner Sean and my two cats, Pumpkin and Spice. Um, we didn't name them that. That's the name the shelter gave that we got them from it gave them. And then we have our little doggie named Searsha. Uh, she's five months old and a ball of energy and she's just hanging out at my feet today chewing on little toy. I kind of wanted to, sh before we get into the knit content, I kind of want to show like some of the things that I've knit in the past that I am kind of proud of or I really enjoyed and maybe kind of show the kind of things I'm interested in doing maybe. I'm still kind of a newer knitter. I've only been knitting a couple years. I learned to knit for my senior project in high school, but I only ever made like dishcloths and some like hot pads and it wasn't until I think it was early 2019 when I was like you know I really want to learn how to knit and learn all these different stitches and be able to learn how to make things so it's really only been a couple of years but anyway I was going to show you a couple things uh first one this was my first ever like big project this is I believe it's called Fallen Cloud by Lisa Hans. Ha I'm not sure if it's Hans or Hannes, but it's this beautiful shawl powder that's all like garter stitch along here and it's got an eye cord bind off. And oh no, it's knitted on the eye cord. Sorry, the bind off's up here. But up here along the edge, it's this beautiful, it's just a very simple lace with cable. So that has three different cables. And it starts from, you start knitting it from this end down here, and it, it's just a asymmetrical shawl, I should say. It's quite beautiful, and it's definitely one of my most used knitting, ob knitted objects. I use it all the time because it's so warm. It's a worsted weight yarn. It's Zedna Barufa, I think that's pronounced. It was some yarn that I inherited from a great aunt who passed away. It was my grandmother's sister. Um, when she passed away, we were allowed to go into her basement and her basement was filled with totes and totes of yarn, like the entire basement. And this was just one of the yarns I got. And I think the color is called lilac, but I haven't really been able to find this yarn. I have found like a few people like selling some of it like online. So that's about it. I, I'm guessing it's not made anymore, but it's super soft. Highly recommend this pattern. This pattern is very well um, written and it's obviously just a great project. So that's Fallen Cloud by Lisa's Hands. Next one. The next two objects are by the same designer. She's probably one of my all-time favorite designers. I love her patterns, but this one is this is the Peaceful People Cow from 
Jennifer Berg, also known as Native Dot Knitter on like Instagram and such. But it's just a two color work cowl that's it's very easy to do. But the pattern is just gorgeous. I think you're seeing the part where the end of my row. But yeah, it's just got a two by two rib, and then you have this design. And it's so warm and squishy. I think this is knit in a Plymouth Merino yarn. But um, my first ever color work patterns were from Jennifer Berg just because she writes them so well and her designs are really just gorgeous and just kind of in your face. And I actually kind of wanted to make this as like a way to experiment with like yellow because um, I don't really like yellow but it's a pretty color um so i put it with blue which is my favorite color and coincidentally i think these are my color my school colors from high school which is completely coincidence i mean didn't mean for that but yeah very pretty um i guess i'll show you the floats very pretty on the inside as well <laughs> yeah um, the other one is actually a recently finished object. I'm actually, I finished it just a few weeks ago, and it's actually the sweater. I wasn't really originally wearing this sweater today, but it was chilly, so I was like, I'll throw it on. But this is the Sheep Camp sweater from Jennifer Berg, and it's just this really pretty two-color sweater. It's top-down. Um, it's got a rolled cuff at the neckline, and then it's two-by-two two rib. Ooh, at the cuffs and at the bottom and it's it's just a big comfy sweater there is some like short row shaping at the back at the neck but yeah this is so pretty it's so comfy I have wear this like every couple days since I've made this like, it is it gets worn all the time uh, the yarn is Harrisville Designs. Um, it's their sheer yarn, which as soon I remember when they released it, I'm like, I want this yarn. I just never bit the bullet to buy it just because it's a little more. But I got asked to do the, or got invited to do the test knitting. So I got to test knit this. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is my first like sweater test knit. I have knit, I've test knit a cowl in the past and I used stash yarn stuff. I was like, this is my first sweater test knit. So I decided I wanted to get this yarn because it would be like the perfect colors that I wanted the sweater in. And it's yarn that's um, grown locally. It's grown in Idaho slash Oregon. So I was like, this is local yarn. I want to use something that kind of helps people in my area. Yeah, I highly recommend this pattern. It's very well written. Um, she has a lot of sizes. I think I did the second size, size B. But, oh my gosh, I can't remember how many sizes she has. But she has a lot of sizes. A lot of sizes, and I could have gone down to size A. If I want like a tighter fitting sweater, but yeah, I'm very happy with this. It's very, it's very comfy, and it's just great. Can't say enough things about it. Um, but it leads into the next thing is we're like recently finished objects, which is this obviously, and then right after that I started working on this, which is a little baby cardigan. I had never knit a cardigan before this. There are a lot of new techniques for me, which is such as um, provisional cast on. That's what it's called, provisional cast on. I've never done that before. And then picking up stitches along the edge on this neckband was new to me. And then just knitting a cardigan in general. I've never knit one before. But this is the Harvest Cardigan from Tin Can Knits. And I did a little baby size. This is some leftover yarn from a sweater I made in 2019 like a it's kind of like a summery t-shirt sweater but it's like a cotton acrylic blend i think it's called cascade it's from cascade yarns and i think it's avalon and i think the color name is turtle green or something like that so this is just a cute little baby cardigan i made it for a friend of mine from high school 
she's having a little baby this summer. And I figured, because when I started this, I didn't know whether they were having a boy or a girl. And I figured green's a good color. <laughs> that would work either way, you know, kind of foresty. And I know she, she likes like kind of fairy, uh, not fairy, like fairy tales, kind of like I do. Um, so I figured this would work well. And I made the... I didn't make the newborn size. I never make the newborn sizes, honestly, because you never know if the child's going to be born bigger. Like, um, my, my sister-in-law, her babies um, were wearing, like, two Ts before they were, like, two T size before they were even a year old. <laughs> so they could be a bigger baby. It could be small. So I, I think this is a six to nine month age size. Don't quite remember. I think it's a second size. But yeah, very cute. Um, it's not perfect. There are some mistakes, but yeah. And I, I thought, you know, a cotton acrylic would be good because it's washable and babies are messy. So <laughs> this would be good to throw in the washing machine. It does need to be blocked still. I still haven't blocked it, but um, she's due here in a few months two months so hopefully I can get it to her she lives out of state now but hopefully I can get it in the mail to her pretty soon um those are all my recently finished projects um I guess we should get to work some progress um this is something I kind of I've been working on kind of slowly I do a little bit here and it's kind of hard to do um a ton of work on it because a lot of times like when I'm knitting I'm like watching the dog or babysitting or something I can't really focus I don't get a lot of like time where I can like sit and focus on a really complicated pattern this you can't really see it because it's it needs to be blocked but this is Cheka I'm not sure it's not Cheka it's from Kino Knits it's from her Shekov collection which is a collection of shawl patterns three shawl patterns that are based on Anton Chekhov's three of his works. And this is the first one, which is Cheka. It's just this beautiful lace pattern. And eventually, when I get there, it should open up to a garter stitch on the side, kind of like the falling cloud pattern did. But it's, it's kind of hard to see the lace pattern right now, just because it's not blocked out. But yeah, this is from... The yarn is King Cole. Um, it's their anti tickle merino blend four ply in the color Dune, which is this. It's very, I just thought it'd be a good color for this just because it's not too loud. I feel like it would show off the pattern pretty well. Did I show you the wrong side? No. <laughs> can't tell which is the wrong side and the right side until it's blocked. But yeah, that's when I reached 100, uh, row 100 and I had to stop on it because I have a, my little stitch counter and I was using that to count these rows, but I needed it for my next project. So I was like, okay, get to row 100 and we'll set this aside for now and then I'll put it back up once I stop using the stitch counter for my other project. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I'm I kind of want to get this done in the next couple months. It's not going to get done finished just because it's so like involved and there's still a lot to do. Um, it's one that's, it, the pattern is adjustable for how much yarn you have. And I have two, I might have a third one of these. So I've got a lot of knitting to do, but I think this would be nice for like end of summer or like early fall. Yeah. Really enjoying the pattern, and I have knit the uh, one of the other shawls from that collection. Actually, let me go grab it. This is the other shawl that I have knit previously from that collection. This is called I think it's called the Two Sisters. No, it's Questions and Answers. And this is knit. Oh, it's backwards. It's very pretty. It's like a striped shawl and then along the edges 
instead of breaking the yarn every time, you create these little twisted loops. You can see, and it's on both edges for both colors. Which I also love that shawl because when you put it on, it's not very warm, it's fingering weight. Um, when you put it on, it's very easy to like take it and you just one end and you loop it in and it just stays on perfectly. It's one thing that kind of drives me nuts about shawls. You have to adjust them all the time if they're not long enough. But this one, because you can loop it in, it's so just easy to wear and it's comfy and it's kind of styling, you know. <laughs> um, but the yarn is from Dragon Horde Yarns and it's the green color is Lallybrock and then this pinkish purple color is Belladonna. They're very pretty colors. Um, yeah, brought that up because so once I finish that, I just need to do the, I think the other one's called Three Sisters, and I'll have knit the entire collection, which I do want to do because they're all really nice designs. The third one is a massive shawl, though. <laughs> it's big. Um, okay, last work in progress. I only have two works in progress right now. But that's probably about to change. Um, so I made that baby cardigan. It's kind of like usually when I, um, with large projects where I've never done certain techniques before, a lot of times I like to do it in like a small size, such as like a cow or a baby size item, just because it's fast. And if I need to start over or I completely mess something up, it's not a lot of work. It's not like weeks of work that I have to rip out. It's very easy and very quick. So I'm, oh, ah, dropped a couple stitches. Apparently I was in a row, two stitches into a row. Anywho, this is the Harvest Cardigan from Tin Can Knits again. I'm apparently two stitches into a row. I don't know. Oh yeah, I got, I started working on a row and I got called into work like last minute last night. So that's what happened and I'm not very far in I'm done the neckband obviously and like I'm working on the increases right here um that's about as far I am I need to do one more set of increases and then ooh, if I remember correctly I knit a little bit and then I can uh separate for the sleeves it's I don't completely remember the process from that part, the baby cardigan, but this is the, it's an adult me sized one, but this is from Cascade Yarns again, and this is Lana de Oro Alpaca yarn in the color of Loganberry. It's a very pretty purple color. Um, it's been in my stash for a long time when I first started like knitting. Uh, a couple of years ago, I bought it. And I'm like, I'm gonna knit like a cardigan out of this. Would be perfect. And I actually think I had this pattern in mind for it. So it's finally turning into it. But yeah, I really like this color, and I only have one other card. It's a store bought cardigan. And it's like a greenish color, which I really enjoy. It's a really pretty color, but I um don't wear a lot of green. <laughs> I wear a lot of purple, so this would fit. This would, should match more my clothing. And so far, this yarn is like super soft and squishy. I do need to start winding up some more the other skeins so I can get it. Um, other skeins haven't been wound up yet. Haven't gotten to it. Probably will do that after I finish filming this. <laughs> but yeah, not very far in. I'm hoping to. Um, the next couple of days, get to sleep separation. The only thing that I'm not really enjoying is all the purling that I have to do for this cardigan, just because it's so much purling. And I don't know why I didn't think about it before I started the other cardigan. I didn't really think about the fact that you have to do so much um, purling for a cardigan like in my brain I was just thinking oh raglan cardigan 
It'll be like sweaters, just knitting. No, but it's lots of purling, which it's good for me. I need to get better at purling. I'm just like so slow at purling, and I don't know why. It's like half the speed, maybe, of knitting. I'm just so slow at it. But we'll get there. I'm hoping that I can use this because it still stays pretty cold for a good amount of the year. Sometimes it gets snow at the end of May, so. Hopefully it's still a little bit cold when I finish this or else I'm going to have to put this in the closet until September, which isn't too long, but you know. <laughs> so that's all for works in progress. So there's a few things I'm kind of looking at. I'm casting on right now. Um, I really want to cast on some socks. There's... I kind of want to do some, like, just some plain ankle socks. I think because I want, like, a nice, like, fresh little quick pattern. That'd be nice, you know? Um, but I also want to try doing some, like, lacy socks. I've never done lacy socks. I'm kind of a novice to socks. I've knit a couple pairs of socks. So three in total. Only one pair has actually fit me, and that was my most recent pair. And they fit perfectly. The others are big. They're definitely house socks for like wearing around the house when your feet are cold. I want to just cast on some socks. I think that'd be nice. And but I'm also wanting to cast on like a like a summery shirt. And so like I have a few ideas on my mind. I just gotta decide which one. Um I have yarn for all of them because I'm trying to knit from stash right now. I don't want to buy any yarn right now. My goal is just knit as much from stash as I can, and then I can buy more yarn. But I have a few ideas. The first one is um, the Peep Show Pullover from Morgan Wolterstorff. Um, I can't remember her Instagram name. It's along the bottom. But it's just based, it's a very summery tee, and she designed it for use with slug yarn specifically. Um, but you can use whatever yarn you want, obviously, but it's, then it's got, like, drop stitches along here in the bottom, and I think there are some along the sleeves. But I was going to use this yarn, which is from Dragon Horde Yarn. It's just a slub yarn. It's called Who Are You? It's from her Alice in Wonderland collection. It's just a very green, blue, I think it's very summery, um, very bright it's not something I'm used to but I'm, I'm kind of like liking like more pastel bright colors usually I'm kind of a darker color and then I use this as the drop stitches because the drop stitches are in a contrast color so the drop stitches along top bottom of the sleeves and this is also from Dragon Horde Yard this is some leftover from I knit the half moon tee um designed by Dragon Horde Yarn and this is called Sea of Poison. And so I just have some leftover and I think that would work really well. I think it kind of bounce off some of these blues really nicely. So that's one thing I'm considering right now is the peep show pullover with this yarn, with this as the contrast. I think that'd be nice. Um, next, next one I'm looking at is from Wool and Pine, I'm sure. A lot of people have seen this sweater and actually um one of my favorite podcaster knitting natty um i think her podcast is called love and stitches she's actually considering making this same sweater as well so that, so that's definitely like oh i should make it as well <laughs> kind of like knitting along with her almost but it's the uh, summer sorrel from wool and pine and i have this yarn i got it from my local yarn shop i have a couple skeins of it but this is I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's Arukania yarns, and it's the Huasco Sock. And it's the color Laguna Grande. I have used this yarn before. Like I said, it's, my local yarn shop is actually a quilt shop with like a small yarn section. So they don't have like a huge amount of yarn, but they have this type of sock. It's usually it's not speckled like this. It's more of like a variegated and I use it for socks a lot. And it's really great socks. Well, I used to say I use it for socks a lot, but the sock that's fit perfectly was made in this. And it's 
really nice yarn. So I've got some of this color. It's kind of makes me think of like Cinderella. <laughs> but it's just this like pastel blue with like pinkish. It's more like a fuchsia and brown speckles. Really pretty. Um, so I think I'd do like the summer swirl in this color. Not faded, just like this color. Um, my only concern with that yarn, with that pattern is <laughs> up top it's got the reverse stock in it and from what i understand after you finish the design up top you do turn it inside out knitting but the top is a lot of purling <laughs> until you hit that spot and it's like ah oh, that's so much work and it would be good to learn how to do the stitch for the designs i don't know what they're called but they're really pretty and i think that it'd be really nice and these are definitely colors I wear a lot, so it would fit in my wardrobe for really well. Yeah, that's another idea. The last idea is actually, it's more like a long sleeve. It's not a t-shirt per se, but it's lightweight. And it's, sorry, I'm looking up to make sure I say it right. It's S-S-N-A by Natsuko Ida. And it's just a top-down raglan. And you can do like a shorter sleeve or you can do like longer sleeves. It has like two sleeve options. And it's got like a split hem and the back's a bit longer. That's knit with lightweight. I think it can go spring ring or sport. But I have this um, Nako Fiore. I don't know what the color is. It lists the color as 10972. I have a bunch of these that I originally bought a couple years ago for another project that I've changed my mind on I don't really want to make anymore and it's that's just really pretty kind of like a grayish purple color so I have a bunch of this that would I think it'd work really well because it's a 25% linen 25 or 25% linen 35% cotton and 40% bamboo viscose and it would just be really lightweight it's I think that the sweater is knit at a pretty loose gauge so I just think it would be nice so it's gonna be relatively easy um, there's nothing complicated up top the only thing is the split hem at the bottom uh, would be a little different like I've never done that before but I don't think that would be too hard honestly like it's probably similar to knitting a heel flat but just binding off before you knit the longer bit that's my guess I've never done it before but yeah so that's kind of what I'm wanting to do right now I'm not sure it kind of changes we'll just kind of see where the wind takes me but I do want to knit something more lightweight because right now a lot of my I've only knit three sweaters and two of them are like long sleeve thicker sweaters and then one of them is actually made from the Avalon yarn and it's like a t-shirt but it's pretty heavy because it's worsted weight so it, it's fine for like spring and fall but it's not great in summer and it's actually when I knit it it was actually a little too big for my liking like it did use like it was the right size for the suggested ease. I understand ease a lot better now and I know that I like less ease compared to what that shirt was and I'm actually a smaller person now so it's like massive and I'm actually considering unwinding that shirt and like remaking it in like a much smaller size. I think that'd be nicer but it's something I'd have to think about just because it was a lot of work and it was my first sweater so there's kind of like memories attached to it but I feel like I just don't really wear it anymore just because it just doesn't fit me very well and I'd wear it a lot more if it did fit me well and but I've never actually frogged something so that's kind of scary at the same time but yeah but that is all for today and I thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope to see you guys in a couple more weeks. Bye!